Can you hear that? Listen carefully. That's the sound of angels singing. Well, good day to everyone. I hope you are all doing well. Now that we have made all the parts that need to be made and all the separate functions of the clock are working correctly, it's time for the final cleaning and reassembly of the whole mechanism. This includes uh, removing all the surface rust and addressing small cosmetic issues which didn't affect the function of the clock and I put off to do later and now is the time to do those things. This also includes uh, disassembly of all sub-assemblies such as the fusee and the various mainspring barrels and even part of the rep repeating mechanism on the dial side of the clock. I uh, disassemble all these parts and essentially reduce them to a whole a basket full of parts so it can be cleaned and I'll do that in a ultrasonically uh, ultrasonic cleaner and um, make sure that they're properly dried and uh, lay it out and reassemble it all together again As much as I would like to uh, report that everything went back together easily and has run flawlessly since I've done that, uh, we all know that life doesn't work this way. You are watching the first reassembly of the whole mechanism. The first of four or five I forget now how many times I had to take it apart, uh, address an issue, and put it back together again. Now, I didn't have to do that to everything. Clearly, some of the sub-assemblies that I mentioned earlier um, didn't need to be taken down. And when I say taken apart, I'm primarily speaking of the two plates with all the gears in between. I had to, after putting them together with all the gears and the, the hammers in between, I had to take those, that aspect of the mechanism apart four or five times before all the little issues um, were addressed. And it's, it's in this latter stage of servicing a timepiece where the smaller issues become more evident and, and need to be remedied um, and sadly they delay the progress the issues uh, some of the issues that I had to deal with is somewhere in the either the cleaning process or the reassembly process the contrate wheel was bumped and and it wobbled started wobbling and this is a wheel that can't wobble so uh, I had to correct that because the wobble would cause the time mechanism to stop another one was that a lever and the repeating mechanism um, started sticking which affected the the free movement of one of the hammers and it, it didn't do that before so I had to disassemble it and address that issue another one of the issues was uh, the winding mechanism for one of the mainsprings was was just tight it was just off and I 
wasn't going to remain satisfied with that, so I took it apart and addressed that issue. Each one of these examples, like I previously said, required taking the two main plates apart and um, and releasing all the gears and hammers, uh, addressing the issues, and then reassembling it all back together again. You're uh, obviously watching a sped up process of of uh, of the reassembly, but just for reference, uh, just the process of putting everything in its plates and putting the two plates back together with all of the pivots in their proper bushings takes between 10 and, and 20 minutes to do that, depending on how the day is going. As I said in my first video, if the idea of doing something over again, like four or five times over again, if that frustrates you very clearly, you shouldn't be working on clocks or watches. Once the two plates are secured, um, then we can address the outside of the tooth plates. Um, the, first, the first one you address is uh, putting the balance in its place, uh, pinning the hairspring and such, and making sure everything uh, runs, uh, runs freely there or uh, operates smoothly. The second one you would assemble on the dial side of the, the mechanism is the alarm mechanism, making sure that um, functions smoothly. And the last one is making sure all of the levers and springs and the rack of the me repeating mechanism is functioning and put together. Now, one of the consequences of only working on this a day or two a week and it now being uh, more than a year later since I first started this project is that you kind of forget how it goes back together. So there's a lot of times where you're uh, testing and trying and and uh, trying to put things here and you, you do a partial assembly and you realize that there's a spring under here or there's a lever over there that goes under the one that you've just assembled so you have to take it part, part of the way apart again. And, and uh, so the, the assembly of even the dial side mechanism, uh, the repeater mechanism, uh, has some uh, stops and goes and take a couple steps back and, and start all over again. And uh, once I had it all together again, it's in this area of the repeater which presented more issues which I hadn't foreseen, more issues and more delays. Um, especially after I stall installed the mechanism in the case. Um, the various racks and levers pivot on posts coming out of the, the main plate and one of those posts has a slight taper to it causing the rack to lift slightly when it's engaged and in, 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 uh, when it's functioning. This affects the interaction of the rack with the hammers and um, in so doing that it, it, it affects how it sounds to the person who's operating it. So time was spent um, finding a way to prevent this lifting from happening and also more time was spent adjusting how deep the hammers engaged with the rack um, and the timing of the strikes um, 
all of this um, is evident in the sound and the timing of the of the strikes when you trip the, the repeater mechanism. And amid the testing of the repeater, the, the various tests that I did and, and trying, the chain um, that you pull to start to wind and start the repeater, it broke and I was able to repair it and used it a few more times and uh, it broke a second time. Um, and after the second time, I decided to replace it with cord. Um, now, while cord may not be original to this particular piece, it was used and can be found in some old clock mechanisms. So I don't feel bad or I don't feel like it's wrong to replace it. I will um, certainly return the chain to the customer, but at this time I think uh, the better product would be a cord, uh, the better and more reliable product. And as I drew closer to a finished product, um, I noticed that the Canon Pinion uh, tripped the hour change about seven minutes before the hour and upon examining the cannon pinion and the quarter snail i really realized that these parts were riveted together and this error was likely there from its very beginning from the from the maker's bench but i couldn't be satisfied with the idea of uh, a clock chiming seven minutes before the hour, um, the time of the new hour and not the time of the hour that it was in. So I decided to separate the parts and re-rivet them together so that the hour change would happen right at the top of the hour. Um, felt like that was the more appropriate solution. And with all those various issues addressed, I was able to put the dial and the hands on and I could go ahead and hang the clock and begin the testing procedure from that, uh, from that place. Now, I know for a fact moving forward that while we have it all together and hanging and running, that I'm going to have to do some more uh, adjusting to the timekeeping and adjusting the length of the hairspring. At the very minimum, I'll be running it for the next two weeks and adjusting and looking at it on a daily basis. Uh, it may take more than that to get it within uh, a range that I'm comfortable with. And at the same time, I'm going to be testing the alarm mechanism in its proper uh, position and the repeater mechanism from time to time as well. And I'm not going to pretend that everything even now at this point is going to operate flawlessly. So I will just continue at this point to continue to run it and continue to test it and bit by bit addressing the increasingly smaller issues as they present themselves. So moving forward, I do plan on posting one more video about this clock and uh, reflections and thoughts that I want to share with you, the watcher, as well as more specifically with the customer. Um, I've done a little bit of history uh, research on the maker of this and the time that it was made. And I'd like to report that to you as well as how to uh, operate the mechanism, how to wind it, set the time and set the alarm and all that sort of stuff. So stay tuned for that in the next 
two or three weeks, hopefully. And if you've made it this far in the video, I just want to express my appreciation for you subscribing and, and watching this series. And um, I never anticipated when I set out uh, making these videos for the customer that I would end up with as many subscribers as I do today. So all you subscribers, I do appreciate that. And um, I will be making more in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this and we'll catch you later.